Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome back to From the Depths Cheese Tactics. And it is yet another episode on spin blocks, because quite frankly every single episode uh, of this uh, particular series could be on spin blocks and the shenanigans you can do with them. And cutting right to the chase, here we have a sus very suspicious looking gun turret. Over there we have our Marauder and, well, let's just shoot at the Marauder. And so that is, I believe, 28 shells, 14 shells per turret, and kablooey. So, now we've got some decent crammage going, it's an act as soothing background noise uh, for me talking and um, everything ouch in general. Uh, what are we dealing with here? Well, as you've probably guessed from the title of this video already, this is spin block turrets, or rather, uh, spin block clipping on a turret. And this turret over here is perhaps one of the ugliest things I've ever built, so if you want to uh, build something better than this, I recommend, uh, I don't know, adding barrels so they all look, uh, they're very least a little bit consistent. But any but, um, spin blocks in From the Depths have the... Um, feature, like that has been covered before, in that they don't interact with reality quite the same way uh, that uh, other blocks do. And one of them is that they can be placed, like, clipping into each other, inside each other, uh, with absolutely no problems whatsoever, apart from all the usual problems. So it's basically folding space in on itself, and means that uh, from the depths, as um, you can indulge in some real space wizard magic. So. Uh, over here, we have the final-ish turret, which, frankly, I could have spent more time on making this turret cap look pretty, um, but for some reason I didn't do that. Uh, future me, give... Uh, not future me, uh, past me, please give yourself an uppercut. And, um, over here is what's actually inside that shell. So, in case you're wondering, uh, this armored shell is on the turret block itself. So this, right here, this uh, 3 meter by 3 meter turret, that is a sub-object that all this metal is sitting on. And you'll notice I can't actually build on any of the crown components in here because they are all mounted on spin blocks. And there's one, there's two, there's three, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight, nine, ten, and... Wait, where are you? There's another one in here. I just lost count. 11? 12, 13, 14, I believe is there. So that's all hidden in there. And this is what it looks like um, when you peel the shell off. And so yeah, these things are all inside each other. So if I clip one of these off, if I actually get on the right sub-object, there we go. So if I take off this one, you'll see it was actually um, hiding inside partially. Uh, another, well, turret, all mounted on spin blocks, so... Like, this is like, the disclaimer, if you haven't figured out already, this is... Cheese of the highest degree, like... I know we've covered some pretty cheesy things. We've covered some pretty uh, sweet, delicious cheddar and gorgonzola, but this, this is straight... I don't know, what's a really strong cheese? I really should have... I really should research more kinds of cheese specifically for this. Uh, I don't know, list in the comments what kind of cheese this is, because this is like, the, like real cheese. So in any case, so uh, the actual sub-object, the spin block in question, is just this, copy and pasted over and over. So this is a not super good cram Tetris, it's just basic diamond Tetris that's not super efficient, it's very small. Individually, uh, this cram cannon is not amazing, it's just 1100 millimeters. A reload time of about uh, 17 seconds, which is okay. It's a decent compromise between getting the shells out there quickly and having enough duck up a shell, like 5,000 damage, 5,000 HE damage per shell. It's not, I don't know, it's not incredible, but it's nothing to be sneezed at, especially not in a big volley. And you'll notice that the local weapon controller is on the spin block itself, and this particular one is uh, missing its... Uh, a wireless receiver, and that's because uh, I didn't want this thing trying to aim when testing uh, the turrets over there. So yeah, and um, it's not super efficient either because uh, I could actually, could I even? I could. 
I really should have done something like this, and then just done something like this, and just get like a little one more extra connection in there. And uh, hindsight is 2020, and um, but that's the number of the year this is in, and the less talk we talk about 2020, the better. So, any case, this is a frankly boring cram turret, but if you stack it like 14 a pop. Uh, on a turret like this, suddenly it's a lot better. I really should have counted here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, it's 13! How did I get 14? So, to show you what that turret actually looks like underneath here... Uh, whoopsie poopsie. We're just going to clip all these off. So, go here... Delete, delete, delete. Uh, part of the reason I made this a 3x3 little sub-object is so it's easy to work it into a roughly round or diamond shaped uh, turret well and you'll notice that these are elevated like so simply so we can get the barrels pointing above each other so this is what it looks like in here it's just this kind of stacked thing and you'll you could argue that uh, it's not hugely space efficient because um, you're having to build up metal back here and you would be absolutely right. The smarter thing to do would have been to just make uh, multiple different variants of this uh, spin block uh, turret and just have, like, the tall ones in the back. Like, obviously, right? So, yeah, that's, um, that's basically it for this. And what are the advantages of this? Well, you'd be very hard-pressed to stick a 13-barrel turret into... What is this? This is a... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, into an 11 by 11 space. Uh, the best I've managed to uh, work into an 11 by 11 space is... Let's see here. Let's, uh, let's science this. 1, 1, 2, 3, 5. That's 11, I think. Okay, so if we pull up our linear super crap Tetris... We go here... Go here, here, here. Yeah, best I have ever managed with that is 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, plus 5, yep, 11. So I've managed to stick two more cram cannons in there than I would have been able to otherwise. And pretty much all of them all have the exact same rate of fire as well, so I guess that's another advantage. So yeah, that's uh, this. Uh, let's fire at something a little bit bigger. And so this is like, yeah, super cheesy, super cheesy. Cannot emphasize enough how damn cheesy this is. Because that's uh, like 30 cram guns, like lodged in. Like that's just two turrets. Like not especially big turrets either. They're like eight meters tall, not counting the top armor. They're like. Yeah, it's, uh, super cheesy. Like, use with discretion. And also, I have a sneaking suspicion that, um... Just repair that quickly, because I think I moved there. Actually, it might also have interesting things, uh, interactions with the explosion. So, let's see, does this work? Thank goodness, I would have been extremely worried if that had not worked. There used to be a problem with the sub-objects, is that any explosion that's originating on them would only affect that sub-object. Uh, that doesn't seem to be the case anymore, thankfully. What happens if I do it here? Works just fine, perfect. Alright, so that's uh, with cram cannons, and you can do this with pretty much any turret, by the way. Heck, you could do it with a missile turret. So, yeah, but where this really shines, because, by the way, doing that with cram cannons is arguably a little bit pointless, uh, because, well, like, only two more cram cannons in, like, that 11 by 11 turret, and you can, if you Tetris uh, cleverly and, like, make little sacrifices, you can get almost that many in that same space without having to resort to that cheese. Where this truly shines is an APS. So, just going to destroy enemy vehicles, get this fella up to the right altitude. This is, like, whatever cheese the Cramon was, 
This is arguably a lot worse, because this thing... Why do I have two of these things? What is going on here? That's interesting, I don't remember that. Not sure why I've got uh, two of these guys here. That's interesting. Oh, that's why. I hit mirror mode. And you can see just how much stuff fell out there. Alright, so working the other way this time. This is our sub-object little thing. This is a 500mm APS gun uh, with 8 meter long shells, and which has uh, what I'm starting to call the unfortunate swastika, because it's going around the turret here. And a swastika, please don't demonetize me, YouTube. So, yeah. And down here, we have the inputs on the autoloaders and the clips, and up here, we just have uh, just a bunch of gauge increases, a little bit of cooling, a little bit of recoil. Uh, once again, i uh, got the wireless uh, local weapon control up here, because the local weapon controller cannot control uh, spin blocks, and so it's just there controlling the firing piece itself, and that's uh, pretty good. So, this is um, not a super good APS on its own. It's like, it's very tall, uh, like, how tall is this thing? Uh, one, uh, nine, uh, ten, eleven. This thing is eleven meters tall while completely unarmored with no turret gap. So that is not super great, and the rate of fire is just 2.4 rounds per minute, which is less than ideal. Uh, this is the shell it's firing, by the way. It is a honking big uh, high explosive shell, almost 13,000 explosive damage, and uh, quite fast as well, 565 meters per second. And yeah, and this is what we did with it. So, if you shrink that, you'll see a lot of stuff clipping into each other. Once again, 3x3 three three spin block. Uh, super handy, if you're feeling lazy, to just stick uh, into this. And the convenient thing about uh, these little intakes is that it lets you see exactly where I have stuck uh, all these little spin blocks. So. That is super handy, and similar story to the cram one. It's got that little elevation thing, because when I made this, I forgot that a valid option was just make the darn spin blocks themselves taller. Uh, which be slightly, uh, takes slightly longer to do, but probably would have been a lot better. So, once again, it appears to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. This is 13, is it? No, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10... Yeah, it is 13. Ah, cool. And this turret cap is the same thing. Uh, it's like once it's fully armored, it all looks like this. And that's a much better looking turret cap, but yeah, I need to work on that. It's uh, If you arrange barrels like this, it's kind of hard to make, well, anything look good, really. But yeah, let's shoot at something, because this is a little bit ridiculous. So 13 times 2.4 is like roughly 26, all crammed into one space. One conveniently all well-armored space, if I armored this in heavy armor, it'd be even better. Let's spawn in a... Let's spawn in multiple marauders, because they're not actually going to last very long. And... Fire! And... Yeah, we just accidentally hit one marauder when going for one. And that's, uh... That's a lot of, uh, lots of, lots of volley fire, hey. And now we wait 30 years uh, for this thing to cool down and fire again. Or rather reload, and away it goes, and... If you like alpha strikes, and if you like ridiculously large uh, volleys of um, guns, uh, this might very well become your new favorite thing. Because, uh, ye gods, uh, this is... Um, there is absolutely no way you'd get any form of like there's no way you'd get a 13 barreled uh, 500 millimeter 8 meter long um like aps gun like into an 11 by 11 space j just without using this kind of shenanigans and the other great thing is that it's got a lot of redundancy uh, because it's got 13 separate barrels this is also expensive i should mention so yeah, this is the this is cheese of the highest degree, and there's not much more to say about it except possibly uh, those of you watching could do a better job than I have with this. And um, so yeah, that's uh, pretty much it, really. It's just yeah, you can spin block turrets, and it's real, real cheesy, 
and I am going to hell for this video, and I'm going to the dark side, I'm already in the dark side, hell is next on the agenda. So yeah, if you have, um, oh my goodness, this poor Marauder. So if you have uh, cheese suggestions, please do share them, there's so much cheese in From the Depths. It is delicious cheese platter all around. And so yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon if you like, it really helps. Thank you to all my current Patreon supporters, and I will see you next time in From the Depths. Cheese Tactics. Farewell.